Is this thing on? Is this on? On. How about this one? On. Yep, they're all on. Good, now I can finally ride. Okay, so a lot of you commented on my road trip video that you really liked all the different camera angles I had on my bike. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set all that up. So let's start right at the very front of the bike with my unicorn here. I call this my unicorn because it sticks out directly uh, from the front of my bike. Um, one thing I wanted to do on this trip, first let me say, I'm not, a, I'm not a professional videographer at all. I don't know an f-stop from a doorstop. I'm, I'm kind of amateur at best. I try my best to improve. So I, I watch a lot of YouTube tutorials. I go try it. Doesn't really look good. Eh, hopefully I get a little bit better. So I'm not professional at all. Um, what I like doing with filming though is when I travel, I only film when I travel. That's why you see on my YouTube channel, my last video was like four years ago because I haven't been traveling for the last four years. So I only film when I travel and what I enjoy is going to different areas and seeing how I can use technology to try to get the best video out of that area as possible. So whether I go to like Africa or I go to Sweden or I'm in Asia or wherever, I just, for me, it's kind of fun to kind of do all the research and see like what technology works and like create kind of a setup for, for me to film in that area. So for the motorcycle trip, I, I, what I wanted to do was, I thought it'd be kind of fun to see how many different angles I could get on the bike and what I specifically wanted to try to avoid was the POV, the helmet on the cam, uh, the helmet on the, no, the camera on the helmet uh, shot that uh, so many other moto vloggers use. I do have that, of course, because it's, it's a handy shot, but I didn't want my whole video. I mean, you guys are not gonna watch 20 minutes of just POV, right? That's boring. So I, I, I wanted to kind of see like how many different angles could I incorporate as a solo filmmaker? So that, that's kind of fun for me to see like, can I make this video look like it was shot by others but actually it was all shot by myself so um I, I was trying to figure out like how can I get like a third party shot you know what, what, what can I do for that I actually bought the original 360 camera the, the first one that came out x something or other and the quality of that was really bad I, I was really disappointed in that um, but then researching online I thought well I'll give them a try again so I bought this one this is the uh x uh, what's this called uh insta one x2 and I gotta say the quality of this one significantly improved over the first one. I was really surprised at that. So so I knew I knew like you've seen these videos online where you, you put on selfie stick, the selfie stick disappears, and it looks like someone's shooting from over here, right? So that, I kind of figured I could do that. The other thing that I really wanted um, I needed for that was a really, really stiff uh, selfie stick because obviously I don't want the selfie stick bouncing around like that. It's not gonna work And if I'm on the highway on my bike, it's gonna be moving So I researched online to try to find like the the stiffest selfie stick I could find and this company is called POV gear and this thing was damn expensive too just for a stupid stick I think this thing cost me almost a hundred dollars and um I mean, it is a pretty good selfie stick. It's obviously not very long. It's only about this long. And the reason why it's, I got the shorter one is because it just this is the one that fits in my top case. So um, it's only about this long. I don't know. I honestly don't know if it's really carbon fiber or not. Who knows? I mean, it could be plastic and it just got painted carbon fiber. They say it's carbon fiber. I will say, though, that these little brackets here, these things here are metal, so I kind of like that. It does feel pretty sturdy and there's not a lot of flex to it, which I like. So I don't know if it's real carbon fiber. I don't know if it's worth $100 or not, but it is a pretty stiff self selfie stick. It's not like those cheapo Chinese ones that you twist. Like, those things are garbage. So I wanted something a little bit stronger than that. So, so yeah, so what I do is I just, uh, oh, okay, let me talk about this thing here. This is one of the things that's not available anymore. This is a company called 360 Fly, and they had, at some point they made the 360 camera and a few attachments for it. And um, I bought this a long time ago, and uh, I just yeah, it's been great. Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. So, um, but it's worked well for me. So what I do is I attach the the selfie stick just to the, the 360 Fly like this, and then this little handle here. Um, I can adjust the stick to kind of whatever angle I want like you know move it around I can go up I can go down I can even turn the selfie the, the camera so like both lenses are facing a certain way and whatnot So actually this thing has been quite uh, quite handy. I, I like this 360 fly You know extension thingy quite a bit. I just tighten it down. It's really tight and then I got my I got my unicorn Sticking out in front of me view and you see some of these shots in the video. And then I also have one on this side as well. So this one here, I kind of like it because I can actually fold it down when I'm in traffic or whatever. And if I want to film, I just pop it up like that. I can screw the selfie stick on super easy like that. And what this angle allows me to do is get that three-quarter 
shot. So that, the unicorn gets me from dead on, and this one gets me that nice kind of three-quarter angle that actually I really like this one quite a bit. So the other cameras that I took are these guys. This is called the Garmin Verb Ultra 30, and this is a fantastic little action camera. It's unfortunately, Garmin doesn't make this thing anymore. They produced this about five or six years ago, and it competed against the uh, GoPro Hero 4, 5, 6, like that kind of era. And compared to the GoPros at the time, I thought this was a way better camera. Let's face it, GoPro is not really an innovative company, right? They make one camera every year, they change the number, and then the marketing team has to figure out how to sell that thing to the public um, but when this thing came out I thought this was a really innovative little camera that I thought Garmin was really going to compete against GoPro unfortunately that didn't happen so they don't make these anymore so there's no more software updates for it they're hard to find if you break something it's, it's the parts are almost impossible to find so that's a real shame but for me I love this little camera and the main thing I like about this camera is this switch on top so this switch allows you to turn on the camera and start recording just by flicking the switch and when you're done you just flick the switch and it stops recording. Now I know the new GoPros have that feature as well. You hold, you push the, the record button, it'll turn on, it'll start recording. But me, what I like is I like the fact that this is a this is an actual button. I can feel it. Um, the GoPro one has got that rubber pad, so you got to kind of feel around for it, and then you kind of push it. Are you pushing on the middle of the pad? I don't know. Like it's hard to feel with your gloves on. With this, it doesn't matter if you're wearing gloves or not because you can feel the button and you just flick it and it turns on. You flick it off and it turns off it's fantastic and so that's how I recorded um, sometimes when I'm going down the highway and I want to quickly record I turn the GoPro on on my helmet I reach forward I flick it on the GPS bar and then I reach behind me and I flick the one that's right here that's on the top of the case right here so I could turn on all three cameras even when I was going down the road the only one I couldn't activate was the one that's on the bottom of the case but I'm not really I'm not I, I, to be honest, I actually tried it <laughs> I thought I could kind of reach down but it's too dangerous I was worried I was gonna do like a wobble because I had like one hand on the steering wheel right so um so I can't turn that one off but what I do is when I know like I'm on some like cool stretch of road that I'm going to record I stop I turn on all the cameras um I, I beat the horn so that they all the audio is all sync making it easier to, to edit in post and uh and then I go and then when I'm on the road if I want to record something on the fly and like what if I see something that I want to record on the fly um I like being able to turn on three cameras because I want different angles because I might do some dialogue um I get the GoPro one and I get a third angle like that. So I really like the fact that I can turn all three of these on on the road. Having said that, um, as much as I love this tactile button, I am tempted to upgrade to the new GoPro because they have that wireless option where you can buy that remote. And you push that remote and it turns on all, all the cameras connected to your bike at the, at the same time. I have to test it first because what I did on my trip was I actually turned off all wireless features on all the cameras. All voice activation, wireless, I turned it all off because I wanted to conserve battery as much as possible. So if you leave that wireless on, you are consuming battery. So I have to kind of test it a little bit, but I do like the idea of being able to just push one button, all the cameras turn on, and then it turn off and push that one button. So we'll see. But for now, um, I'm really happy with this Garmin camera. I love this thing. They're so hard to find. I keep scouring on eBay and Craigslist, and when I see one come up, I buy it right away. But uh, this thing has been really fantastic. So let's talk about my helmet setup. Um, obviously, you, uh, you probably, you're probably familiar with this thing. This is the Pro Shot. I do like this thing quite a bit um, because I don't like that. I don't like the visual of having that all that scaffolding, you know, on your helmet. Some people have got like a lot, like four GoPro mounts that kind of looks like a tumor almost sticking out of the side of your head like I don't like that at all I want to try to get as clean a look as possible so this pro shot I think is pretty good um, some of you asked me why do I mount it upside down like this instead of the other way which a lot of uh, moto vloggers do and it's because of framing I, maybe I would do it differently if I had a different bike but I, when I tested it when it's the right side up um, you can see here that the, the, the I don't see as much of the bike 
If you divide it into thirds, I see more of the sky, the road, and less of the bike. Where if I flip it upside down, uh, we can, it's more even when you divide it into thirds. So if the lower third is the bike, the middle is the road, and the upper third is like the top of the windscreen and the sky and all that. So I like that framing better than when I have it kind of the right side up. So that's why I put it upside down. Um, so yeah, I have the GoPro Hero 9 on here. And what I want to talk about actually is my audio. So the audio is like a nightmare. Like there's an infinite number of options and p suggestions that people make. Everyone seems to love like a certain microphone. And let's face it, all, almost all the microphones that people are recommending on Amazon, um, no matter what color or what animal they are, they're all just crap from AliExpress in China anyways. None of those microphones are really that great. So don't get too caught up in like, oh, I gotta have the purple panda one, I gotta have the pink elephant one or whatever. They're all the same, they're all coming from China. They're not, they're, those cheap, you know, $15 microphones are not that high quality, they're all the same thing. So. Um, but a couple things I didn't like about that. I don't want to have a huge, you know, cable running throughout my helmet. You see a lot of them, they wrap it up, they put it in their cheek or whatever. I didn't want that option. So I searched online and I found this company that makes this little tiny 3D printed microphone. Like, and this is it right here. Like, that's it. And the lead goes in the bottom there. And it just connects like to my GoPro and that's it. I don't have a huge lead like, you know, going around my helmet or anything. That's just like, you know, five or six inches connecting directly to my GoPro. And this is the whole microphone assembly right in here. And it's got Velcro on it. So it just attaches with Velcro to the inside of my helmet there. Now I will say, now here's another thing, <laughs> unfortunately, that's not available anymore. This is this is a guy who just makes this at home. He was 3D printing these. Uh, he had a little bit of publicity. He was featured in some magazines, but then due to work obligations or whatnot, he's not making them anymore, unfortunately. So unfortunately, that's one another, another thing that you can't actually buy it. Well, you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of things on my bike that unfortunately you can't buy anymore. So maybe this video is not useful. But for me, um, I really like this setup. I, I I would say the audio quality is not bad. It's not fantastic. At at times there can be a lot of wind noise. Like I say at times because the wind noise seems to differ depending on where I'm riding, conditions, I don't know what's going on, the position of the sun, what I had for breakfast that morning or whatever. Sometimes there's a lot of wind noise, sometimes there's almost no wind noise. So I don't know, it's kind of strange. But I, I actually do like a little bit of wind noise uh, in in my audio room when I'm recording because some of the ones I've, I've heard, they got it all sealed up. It sounds like they're in a studio. And to me, that's too removed from the experience that they're shooting, from what they're shooting. They're, guy, they're going down the highway, you know, 80, 90 miles an hour, and they sound like they're in a recording studio. I, I don't wanna, that does it sounds strange to me. So I think the audio should always match what you're filming. So I like a little bit of wind noise so the audience can feel, especially the POV view, right? You want the audience to feel like you're on the bike. So this thing here um, does allow a little bit of wind noise. You can hear it in my, in my videos. Wow, the sun is just creeping down, just creeping. There we go, give me some warmth, give me some warmth. Um, so I really like that. Like I said, sometimes, I don't know why it is, maybe wind's coming from the side or something like that, there's a lot more wind noise and it's a little bit too much. But overall, I'm really happy with the setup. It just fits in the front of my uh, helmet. Uh, I got a really tiny lead, it's plug it in, and it, so far it's worked pretty good. The only issue, actually ironically, of all the cameras that I take, the only one that's caused me the most problems is this GoPro. Then I tell you this company GoPro drives me insane. I've had issues with audio cutting out. I've had issues with the camera not recording. I've had issues with the SD card getting corrupted. Uh, yeah, so uh, the the software and the the um, uh, uh, quality control of GoPro is not that great. But other than the GoPro, all the other cameras are working great. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, this little guy is not available anymore. Um, I can I'll post a link to the guy's website if he maybe he comes back in business or whatever. But uh, this is my audio setup, and uh, I've been extremely extremely happy with this. So the last two cameras that I have with me are my iPhone 11 Pro and my Panasonic G85, which is what you're seeing me on right now. And uh, you know the iPhone is kind of interesting because I'm in, I'm intrigued by the uh, the ability, the option 
or the opportunity, that's a better word, the opportunity to film something with just my phone. Like if I could just film with just my phone, it'd be great. I wouldn't have to carry so much other gear, right? So I'm intrigued by that. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet, no matter what Apple marketing tells you. I don't think we're quite there yet, but it's getting kind of interesting. But um, the one thing that I, I wish I did bring with me on that trip for my iPhone was an ND filter. I totally forgot about it. I have ND filters for everything else, but I totally forgot about it. And you can see in this shot here, like, why do you want an ND filter? Well, you can see in this shot here, as I roll into frame, it's quite jittery, right? And that's because I have the frame rate set at 24 frames per second, but then the shutter speed, because it's so bright out, the shutter speed speed has to, to increase to a really high rate. And so it makes, the, makes the, the, the bike look jittery as I roll in. This shot here, which is just static, you don't see any, any jitter because it's just a static, there's no movement. But when there's movement, uh, the shutter speed has to increase and so you get that kind of jitterness, uh, jitteriness. Um, if I had an ND filter, I could slow down the shutter speed um, and, and smooth that out a bit. So I, I wish I took a, a, an ND filter. I'll take one on my next trip. I totally forgot. Um, and the last camera is this Panasonic G85. Once again, this camera is a few years old. I bought it, I bought it about, maybe, I don't know, five or six years ago. And I mainly bought it for the size. I like the Micro Four Thirds format because of the, the compactness of the body and compactness of the lens. I mean, look at this thing. I'm holding this thing, but this is a 45 to 200 mil. And this is, it's, it's, it's not, they're not even as tall as my iPhone. It's like smaller than my iPhone. So the fact that I can carry a 200 mil lens with me that's smaller than my phone and just puts in my top case is just fantastic. So I like the Micro Four Thirds format just for the, the compactness factor. This camera, I've taken it all around the world. I took it to Africa where it got completely dusty. I took it to the uh, northern Sweden to, to film the Aurora. It, it froze out there. It was, it's really, I was surprised at how, how versatile and robust this camera has been. The new S5, I think it's called, the Panasonic S5, the full frame one, it's about the same body frame is a little bit larger so that's really kind of interesting as well the fact that they can make a full frame sensor full frame camera in a small body that's kind of interesting the lenses are still going to be pretty big so i'm not sure if i'll go that route or not yet but uh, uh this panasonic g85 I'm, I'm really happy with it it allows me to store you know two lenses in here this is just the kit lens on there right now this is a 45 to 200 and i'll store it all in here and i use it for like audio and stuff like that so so that in a nutshell, is the eight cameras that I took on my trip. So I hope this video was useful for you. Uh, I know some of the stuff you can't even buy anymore, so I don't know how useful this video would be. Uh, but uh, I really encourage everybody, if you're going to do some moto vlogging, get some other cameras, get some unique angles on there. It makes editing so much more fun, and it will make your final product more enjoyable than just strictly POV. You know, and you know what? And, and don't, don't just buy a drone and stick a drone up in the air too, because I see a lot of people doing that as well. Like, oh my God, I got some epic drone shot. No, your drone is just in the air. <laughs> you have to frame it to get an epic shot right so let's all try to become better filmmakers by framing ourselves buying the right gear and going on epic road trips not just like buying gear stick it up there and going well that's an epic shot but um anyway so yeah hopefully that was useful if you have any questions just let me know and uh thanks for watching <music>